Greetings to you all. My name is Brenda Candiero, and today I'm at uh, Ucrest Farm just to take you through uh, broiler management, a practical on broiler management. I'm sure you've been following us um, on all our Facebook trainings and basically I've just been talking to you, but I thought today it could work out better and you could understand it more if I actually go onto the farm and try to demonstrate uh, what we normally talk about. So today there's really nothing new that I'm going to talk about, but I just want you to have a closer look uh, at the farm. So today I've got with me um, Mkoma Steven uh, and he's just going to take us through uh, in his house. Um, he's the manager of this place and we are going into his house. He's got about 8,000 uh, broiler chicks that are three days today and we will be talking about them. So uh, as I start, I'm going to start on the housing structure before we get into the house, right? So this is our house and uh, this about 15,000 beds but today there's just 8,000 of them but the most important thing that I want to talk to you about is the structure so the first thing that we have to consider is what we call um, housing orientation the layout of your house uh, when you are building it so we recommend that you build your house uh, on what we call an east west orientation and this is uh, whereby the length of your house is going along the rising and the and the setting of this of the of the of the sun right the importance of doing that is because we want the sun to be always on top of the roof because we do not want direct sunlight uh, in the house so I'll just take take you closer here as you can see this is the the length right all the way from there going down these are the two lengths and the first thing that you have to take into consideration is that from you build it from down up about it's up to here half a meter you build uh, uh you build using brick right and from there all the way to the top we are using mesh wire and the width i'm sure you will see the width the two widths, these now you can build with brick all the way to the roof. The reason why we are doing this is because we want at the end of our flock to allow maximum ventilation into our chicken house. So if we build with brick all the way, it's going to be very difficult um, to have good air coming in and bad air coming out. So you only build up to 50%. As, as you can see, this, this wall, you need to plaster it so that when you are washing and disinfecting it becomes easier so all the brick walls must be uh, plastered uh, with cement for easy cleaning right and then as you can see we use uh, this mesh wire on both uh, on the both uh, long sides and this mesh wire we recommend that you use uh, a 10 millimeter um, diameter of the mesh wire we don't want it too big because remember, our biosecurity, we don't want birds to be flying in there. We don't want rats to be flying in, in here as well. I'm sure you can see here, there is a, 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 a bait here for the rats. This is just a, a biosecurity measure that we take. Remember, rats and birds, they can cause salmonella and we don't want them inside. Also, any predators that may, may, may come in, they can't go through this uh, mesh wire. And I'm talking about wild cats, wild dogs. So you need to put this uh, uh, so that uh, nothing gets into your chicken house, right? And on the roofing, we normally recommend that if you use the iron sheets, make sure that in very hot, um, in the very hot conditions, maybe you can insulate them. You can either paint, um, you can paint them white so that they are reflecting uh, heat or you can put thatch grass, or thatch, uh, grass on top of them. Um, so again, as I've said before, the orientation, the sun has to go along it, right? So that there's no direct sunlight. If however, your house is uh, on a south, um, southwest, uh, sorry, south, north orientation then you have to put an overlap like this so that again 
you are blocking direct sunlight um, into the chicken house. So this is the house orientation that um, we expect to see. And your housing must be uh, very strong, uh, also just that it will not fall even under harsh conditions. Okay, so now we are inside um, this fowl run and in here we've got 8,000 uh, broiler chicks and today they are on their third day. So as you can see, they are still using um, these chick trays and these chick phones as they are still small. And as you can see where I'm standing on, there's a khaki paper and the purpose of this paper is for us to be able to put extra feed so that we increase the feeding space for our birds. So the idea is uh, for every bed, wherever it turns, it has to come across some feed. And I also want you to have a look at our bedding. So what we are using here is uh, what is actually very ideal. These are wood shavings. There are so many people who confuse wood shavings and so does. But I just want you to have a closer look at these wood shavings. This is what you get when um, carpenters are planing their planks. So these are very good because they absorb the moisture and they are also very comfortable. And um, the, the depth, it has to be very deep. If you can see, as I'm digging here, it's actually very deep. You can see almost 10 centimeter deep, right? And this is for the comfort one for the chicks as well as um, to, 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 to maintain the temperatures. Remember, most of the cold is coming from the floor. So we are insulating the floor uh, so that our birds are comfortable. And I'm sure I've taught you before a way of trying to see whether the chickens or your birds are feeling cold or they're feeling warm. So what you do is you just take a chick and then you can put the feet against your cheek or against your neck. If you feel cold, then it means the cheeks are cold. And as I can feel right now, this cheek is actually feeling very warm and very comfortable. And thanks to this uh, very good and dry um, bedding. And this is where they come to drink um, th th their water. And we've seen often that when they are drinking, sometimes they spill or when we are feeling these, sometimes they spill. So you just need to go around and if there are any wet patches, you are actually removing them so that your bedding remains dry. So you just remove the wet patch, you take it away, you can replace it. And you will uh, know that as these chicks grow older, we will slightly increase uh, the height of both the feeder and the drinker. Because we will adjust it accordingly because we always want our chicks to feel very comfortable when they are drinking or when they are eating. As you can see, they must be standing on their feet. They mustn't go too low or too high to try and reach the water or the feed. And um, this khaki paper, as you can see now, it's getting wet and bad. So on the third day, we must remove it and throw and, and remove it from from, from the chicken house. So its purpose is only uh, for the first three days where we are encouraging. And you will notice that when the birds are actually eating from the paper, it makes a sound that will attract the chicks. And so they will want to come and eat more feed. But after three days, now they have learned that feed can be found from the feeders and they will go to the feeders. So feeding space and drinking space is also very important. We want to try as much as we can to minimize pressure on drinkers and on feeders. So as you can see, these chick phones and these feeders, the ratio that we recommend is that for every one drinker, it, uh, there are 50 chicks to drink from there. And as well for the uh, feeder as well. So one feeder is for 50 chicks, uh, one, one drinker, is for, for 50 chicks. So just make sure that you have, you maintain that ratio correctly so that there's no bullying. Remember that other chicks can actually bully some uh, who are not as strong. So 
in order to avoid that, we really have to make sure that our feeding space and our drinking space uh, is equal to the number of the beds that we have in here.